Yesterday, a major truck maker recalled almost 30,000 trucks because there's the chance the engine could die on the highway. So, let me teach you the memory items you need to remember if your truck engine fails while you're going down the road. That's coming up right now on Trucking It. Okay, engine failure can happen in any truck, but it is bad enough now that International Truck and Engine Corporation, a division of Navistar, who in turn is a division of Volkswagen, just released a massive, massive recall of 27,500 trucks because their electrical cables could break resulting in a bad ground to the chassis, which in turn fries the computer. Uh, there's other types of engine failures too, and it's not just them. So for instance, I mean, I've had the, I've had the type of failure due to a manufacturing defect where a valve struck a piston on an interference engine. And trust me, when that engine goes bang, and gets out of sync it's real nasty so let's go through the engine failure checklist so that y'all know what to do if your engine suddenly shuts off one steering wheel hold firmly this is not the time to be watching videos or texting while driving and if you think it is then you, you've got a head up your ass because that steering's going to get firm as heck and you're going to need some muscle to turn that steering wheel. And if you're, you've are you got a phone in your hand, you're not going to be able to do it. Number two, find a safe place. And then there's 2A and 2B. If you have an automatic transmission, now, if your vehicle still has electrical power, it will shift to neutral. But in this case, your vehicle's going to lose electrical power, so you're going to have to shift it manually. If you have a manual transmission, like a 10-speed or an 18-speed or a Super 10, 13-speed, whatever, you're going to want to press that clutch pedal in once you've started slowing the vehicle so that you can coast down to a safe stop. Now, of course, this is going to vary. If it happens where you're going down a hill, your circumstances are really bad. And then you're going to want to just leave that transmission in gear and find out how you're going to brake. And if necessary, you might have to go for a runaway ramp. If you're on flat ground or a road with a decent shoulder or combination thereof, then you go on to step three. Begin braking. You'll want to do stab braking if you're going down a mountain, gentle braking otherwise. And remember, you've only got a couple of applications before you lose your air. Then, once you've gotten to a complete stop on a in a safe place, such as a shoulder, rest area, truck stop, or parking area, then you set the parking brake, you turn the key off, and then you start to troubleshoot what caused the failure. And now, if your gauges are blank, before you shut that key off and your digital screen's gone, you're going to want to immediately call your road service. Since this is the type of failure that's happening to the internationals. But if your gauges are not blank, meaning if you still have a screen up, you've still got your indicators pointing towards their respective gauges, your warning lights are on, then you want to shut the key off, try to restart the engine. 
and troubleshoot the problem. At this point, you also need to set your triangles out and get ready to call road service. Now, there are some special situations in which some parts of this checklist may or may not apply. But, this will give you a general idea. Now, here's those special situations. Number one, if you're going down a mountain when the failure occurs. Now, if you've got a manual transmission, you want to leave it in gear. In that case, until the vehicle slows. And use your service brakes as much as you safely can before you lose the pressure. And again, remember, you've only got a couple applications. You may have to use the runaway ramp in order to slow down or stop. Two, if you are on a road that has no shoulder and no safe place to stop. When this failure occurs, if you're in that situation, immediately call not only your road service, but also the non-emergency number for your local police department or the state DOT. Now in Texas, there's a phone number on the back of the driver's license that you can call, and they will send somebody out to assist you when you call that number. But remember, you've got to know your location in order to do this. So on your GPS, there might be a mile marker function or something like that use it. If you're on a road that has no shoulder also, you really need to get those triangles set quick. Now, there is one special circumstance where your engine might stay running. And that is if your stop engine warning light comes on just before the failure. On some vehicles, you might have an additional 30 seconds if you press a button labeled shut down override. You just press that button one time so that you can get past that bridge or overpass and to a safe place to stop. Now, if the warning light's thrown, that means at least you still have a running engine and you can get to a stop before the engine shuts down. In the case of these internationals, though, that's not the situation they're in. And number four is that if you lose the electrical power, you're likely to lose the lights, too. Making it even more important, once you get to a stop and get your brakes set, to begin troubleshooting the problem and to set your triangles out. So, engine failure checklist. It should be fairly easy. Just remember, driving a, driving a truck is not like driving a car. So, be ready, just in case. I want you all to stay safe, my friends. And until next time, let's make your best trip your next trip. Get those recalls fixed, and I will catch you on the next episode. Bye for now. One more thing. Here's your other checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. And please be sure to share this with all your trucking friends. Check. <laughs>